If experience, knowledge, and context can't get you a job in this economy, try being a recent college graduate. Jennifer Cronvall and Megan Campbell graduated from Washington State University last year, and things didn't look too rosy. With degrees in hand, both set out to find the elusive job. Hundreds. Well, I sent out resumes to the Seattle area, um, some in California, probably a bad idea, um, Oregon, um, just all over the state, basically all over the Pacific Northwest, because that's where I kind of wanted to stay, but hadn't really heard back from anyone, or just, you know, we've reviewed your resume, sorry, too bad. Um, we've decided to close this position is another one that I've heard. Like, I applied, I don't know, hundreds, and then when I got back home, it was hundreds again, because I had, you know, eight hours a day that I could <laughs> apply for jobs when you're not working. Some of their friends didn't even try to find work. They went back to school and decided to wait out the economy. But these two weren't deterred. Cronval and Campbell did have experience, and where it counted. Beginning this summer, they both had internships with contractors at the Hanford site. So when the Recovery Act funded new jobs, their experience and relationships they built at the site paid off. I knew that after, like, after being out at Hanford and trying to network with people, I knew something would happen. I just didn't know how fast or when. Finally had an interview in September and got hired on. <laughs> Nancy Hulse was hired with Cronval and Campbell, and she knows the Hanford site very well. Like the other two, her first job out of college was at Hanford back in the 70s, and her last was in 2005 when she was laid off because of budget cuts. Five years later, and thanks to Recovery Act funds, She's back at Hanford supporting the True Project. It's, I think it's doing good. It's, uh, Hanford needed the, the budget to clean up, basically. Seven buildings that make up Lower Arid Lands Ecology, or ALE, at the foot of Rattlestake Mountain, are one step closer to becoming history. The former Army Barracks and Nike Missile Battery were given a final walk down before they're demolished by CH2M Hill decommissioning and demolition crews. Just be careful in there, there is water on the floor and there's a broken toilet. Workers removed everything from light fixtures and asbestos to wiring. Enough wiring to fill this room one foot deep. All the bags are in there. Recovery Act dollars have pushed the project ahead, giving CHPRC the skilled labor needed to do the work and shrink the cleanup footprint. CH2M Hill plans to use Recovery Act funding to demolish 14 facilities and clean up 168 debris sites located throughout the lower and upper AL site. The lower building should be fully demolished by spring. Decommissioning and demolition at the 183K West Sedimentation Basin is moving forward and fast. Half of the cell walls have been knocked down and the debris has been removed from the 292,000 square foot basin. Recovery Act funds have accelerated the work years ahead of schedule by supplying manpower, training, and tools to the project. K West Water Treatment Facility is a $17.6 million uh, Recovery Act funded project. It's performed by CH2M Hill, uh, scheduled to be complete by the summer of 2010, uh, years ahead of the baseline schedule. The water treatment facility was used to cool the K-West plutonium production reactor during operation. Water was pumped from the Columbia River at a rate of 140,000 gallons per minute and was treated with various chemicals to minimize corrosion before being sent to the reactor. Demolition and cleanup of the facility will include seven support structures, the headhouse, clear wells, and pipe tunnel, to name a few. When the facilities are gone, soil remediation will start, and crews will be able to prevent contamination from moving toward the Columbia River. <laughs>